Good morning. You warmly welcome to St. Michael's online service. My name is Timmy Hajai. I'm the curate. I'm glad you're able to join us. Today is Mothering Sunday, which is a day set aside to honor mothers and mother figures in our lives. So in our time of worship this morning, we're going to join others across the world in celebrating mothers and mother figures. So as part of our, our service this morning, Vary, a member of the congregation, will speak to us about some of the joys and challenges of uh, being a mother, uh, particularly in this current climate. Sandy Avika will also speak to us uh, later on on how parents can help children in their path to wisdom. The service also includes contributions from Alex, Alastair, Lauren, Marion, Joe and Stuart, uh, the Friday Mom Group and our music team. The WhatsApp introduction will now appear on your screen. Please respond by saying the part in bold. Praise God who loves us. Praise God who cares. Jesus, like a mother, you gather your people to you. You gentle with us as a mother with our children. You comfort us in our sorrow and bind up our wounds. In sickness, you nurse us and with pure milk, you feed us. Jesus, by your dying, we are born to new life. By your anguish and labor, we come forth in joy. Despair turns to hope through your sweet, sweet goodness. Through your gentleness, we find comfort in, in fear. Gather your little ones to you, O God, as a hen gathers her brood to protect them. Amen. Using the special prayer by the church for today, the collect for Mothering Sunday, let us pray. God of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth and on the cross drew the human family to himself, strengthen us in our daily living that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now have our first song, Everyone Needs Compassion. Give my life to follow 
My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. Hi everybody, it's Marion here to do the notices. It's great to be with you. And of course, it's Mother's Day today. So for some, that'll mean perhaps breakfast in bed, no cooking. And for others, it'll be a day of mixed emotions, perhaps quite a reflective day. But I do think um, on Mother's Day, it's quite a good day to think about mothering in its broadest terms. Because I'm sure that we all know and have women in our lives who uh, are not our mothers and who care for us and love us and encourage us. So let's, uh, you know, of all days, let's really remember and be thankful for those women and for that sort of vital role that they play in our lives. So moving on, um, I sent this week the church survey. So please do um, fill that in. That's just asking about uh, your views on restarting our morning services and Sunday school. And it's just a chance to add any other comments. It's really short. So do um, complete that and fill that in by Monday, by tomorrow. That would be great. So um, I haven't got very much news. So I'm just going to move on to birthdays, in fact. And yesterday it was Kieran Thornhill's 18th birthday. So that's quite a milestone, isn't it? So happy birthday to you, Kieran. And then on Tuesday, it's Brenda Wolf's birthday, and there's a very fine example of a woman who loves and encourages and supports so many other people. So, wishing you a very happy birthday, Brenda. And then um, on Thursday, it's Vari's birthday. So, wishing you a really happy birthday for Thursday. And in fact, I'm going to hand over to Vari now, who's going to talk about being a mother. So, I look forward to being with you next week. Bye for now. Good morning, happy Mothering Sunday. My name is Vari and for those of you who don't know, I have three young children. Harrison, who turns six today on the 14th, Logan, who is three and a half, and Elodie, who turns two at the end of the month. And I've been asked to speak to you today a couple of things about motherhood and the ups and downs and that I've experienced, which as you can imagine during the pandemic, have been quite varied. Um, the thing that I have missed the most throughout this whole year is my friends and family. And that sh obviously shouldn't really be a shock to anyone, but it has made me stop and realize how important this is in my family life and as a role as a mother. Um, I think before I probably saw friends and family in more of a selfish way to make myself feel happy and enjoying life and actually it's realising this year that the friends and family also make me a better mother. Um, having that time to watch my children play with their amazing grandparents, godparents, um, aunties and uncle is when I get to sit back and watch my children 
at their happiest and get to enjoy every last bit of them without having to be the homeschool teacher, um, still trying to do work, still trying to do chores and not having that support system um, has really made me struggle this year as a parent. So what I really wanted to do this Mothering Sunday is give a big shout out to all of those parents who were doing an amazing job but also to everyone who is that support system and might not realise what a crucial role you have in every child's life. Um, so thank you from the bottom of my heart as a mother to um, everyone who can be that additional friend or family member um, to a mother today. Now I've also got a challenge for everyone. I was actually asked by um, my children's godparents to sum up my children um, individually in three words. Now I feel we've all done this at some point in different quizzes with themselves, but I've actually never stopped to think how I would describe my own children. And it really gave me pause for thought and made me stop in the middle of all this craziness and reflect on them as individuals and definitely was illuminating and made us laugh. So on Mothering Sunday, I hope that you all get in touch with those people who are really important in your lives and can be that amazing support system that we especially need at the moment, but also um, send out that love towards your children and enjoy the amusing, creative, in my family definitely sometimes quite crazy children and human beings that they've become. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, Kofi! You haven't tidied your room again and Mum and Dad are so cross with you. Go on, do it. It is Mother's Day after all. Oh, there's so many other things I want to do though. Tidying is so boring. Oh, I know Kofi, but it says in the Bible that we should honour our parents, our father and our mother. And I know not all parents are brilliant, but ours are pretty good. And I really think we should try and honour them. Honour them? What? Like, make them a king or a queen and give them honour? <laughs> no! Not like knighting someone, but treating them with respect mm. and thanks. Mm. Yeah. I suppose I could do that, but does that mean I have to tidy my room? I think on this occasion, yes. Oh, well, if you think that's what honouring them means, I suppose I can. I'd rather just find a sword and knight them though, to be honest. <laughs> You're so funny, Kofi. <laughs>
Good morning. My name is Alex, and our first reading today is from Psalm 78, verses 1 to 8. My people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things, things from old, things we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children, so that the next generation would know them even the children yet to be born, and they in turn would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. They would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation, whose hearts were not loyal to God, whose spirits were not faithful to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks for the reading, Alex. We now come to our time of confession. Shall we take a moment of silence to call to mind our sin, our failure to value the love of others, particularly those who have invested so much in our lives, such as our mothers, and let us acknowledge our failure to love as Christ has loved us. Your love gives us life from the moment of conception. We fail to live as your children. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to do good. We seek our own good. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help. We ignore the cries of others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Allah Star will now bring her second reading, after which Sandy will preach. Our second reading is a selection of verses from the book of Proverbs. A wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish son brings grief to his mother. A wise son hear, heeds his father's instruction, but a mocker does not respond to rebukes. Even small children are known by their actions. So is their conduct really pure and upright? Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline will drive it away. Start children off in the way they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. Listen to your father who gave you life, and do not despise your mother when she is old. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. Children's children are a crown to the aged, and parents are the pride of their children. This is the word of the Lord. In our church family, we represent every type of family structure and every stage of life. But all of us, I believe, have a part to play in bringing up children 
We all have some relationship with children as fellow church members, godparents, grandparents, uncles and aunts, friends, whatever. And Marion's already said how important people who are not your parents can be in your life. Well, the Bible doesn't give us much instruction about parenting. Most of what there is, is in the book of Proverbs. And Proverbs is a book about wisdom. Wisdom, it says, is better than gold, silver, or rubies. Blessed are those who find it, for nothing compares with wisdom. So if we want the best for our children, we want to help them acquire wisdom. And of course, wisdom includes God. It includes knowing who we are and why we're here. Wisdom is more than knowledge and more than just being good or moral. You might define it as competence with regard to the complexities of life. Competence with regard to the complexities of life. Making wise decisions in the vast majority of cases where the rules don't give us the answer. Like who should you marry? What job should you do? How do you handle people well? When should you keep silent? When should you, you speak? A whole range of issues on which we have to learn to be wise, to make wise decisions. It has to be discovered day by day. There are no techniques or quick fixes in acquiring wisdom. It's a way or a journey. Start children off in the way they should go, says Proverbs, and when they're older they will not depart from it. So helping children on the way to wisdom is a key thing for parents and for all of us in the church family to do. A wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish son brings grief to his mother, Proverbs tells us. So this is not a traditional view of parenting. You know, get them to obey the rules and do what you tell them. And it's not a more modern approach just to affirm them and love them and build up their self-esteem so they can be whatever they want to be. Of course, there's truth in both of those things, but Proverbs is offering us something more than that. Proverbs says the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, disciplines the son he delights in. So good parenting needs both discipline, the traditional approach, and delight, the modern approach. But Proverbs is offering us more than that, a better way. You don't just want them to be like you. You want them to learn from the things you've got wrong and to go beyond you, to deal with situations you've never encountered and to get to the point where they don't need you anymore. And it's not just about loving them and then everything will be fine. Because Proverbs says that folly is bound up in the heart of a child. Even small children, it says, are known by their actions. So is their conduct really pure and upright? No, of course it isn't. We know that. Children like the rest of us are not naturally wise. They're selfish and they need to learn wisdom. So we have to set boundaries. We have to show children the consequences of wrongdoing and selfishness and begin to appreciate their impact on others. No, they say, is the most character-forming word in the English language. So it's not just follow the rules, and it's not just love is all you need. It is starting them off on the way of wisdom, so that when they're old, they won't depart from it. And of course that means not just words, but actions as well. Children are always watching, aren't they? Someone said, children sometimes do what their parents say, but they always do what their parents do. So it's the whole of our lives that will show them that way. And of course the way of wisdom includes God. Proverbs says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If children don't realise there's a God and a moral order to life, then they're out of touch with reality and they'll get into trouble. And it's our responsibility as the previous generation to tell them. Psalm 78 says, We won't hide these things, we will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord. So that is the way that, of wisdom that we're aiming to start children in.
The parents of a wise child rejoice in them, Proverbs says. If you have a coherent sense of right and wrong and you live it consistently and you set boundaries for children and you love them and delight in them, then you've done your job. You've brought them up. You've given them what they need to handle the complexities of life. And then it's their life. If they mess it up, it's not your fault. But if you live inconsistently and you don't discipline, you don't delight in them, you don't teach them, you just leave them as free autonomous selves to find their own path and make their own decisions, then you haven't fulfilled the vitally important role that God has given you. And all of us have a part to play. We won't hide these things from the next generation. Well, we sense, don't we, that this isn't easy. We can get it wrong and mess up children's lives. They only get one shot at childhood. Uh, this book by the journalist Deborah Orr is in the best-selling list at the moment, and it's called Motherwell uh, because it's about her upbringing in the Scottish town of Motherwell. But I think the title is probably also a pun, Motherwell, because above all, it's a book about her relationship with her mother. And she says this, I realise now that my mother's main trouble was her pathological inability to understand that I was a separate person from her. She wanted to keep me with her in the same way as she wanted to keep her arm with her. Deborah Orr says she spent her whole life reacting against everything her mother was. For example, her mother never swore, so Deborah Orr says she swears all the time. So she was still controlled by her mother even after her mother had died. How do we as parents avoid over-investing in our children so that they matter too much to us? Because if we do that, we'll either try too hard to mould them and control them, uh, make them like us, we'll never let them go, or we'll be so dependent on their good opinion and uh, that we'll be terrified to offend them and we'll never discipline them or correct them. And either way can be a disaster. And as children, how do we avoid constantly seeking our parents' approval and trying to live up to them if we have good parents or reacting against them and rebelling and feeling resentful if we have less good parents? Well, to answer that, we need to think about how to get parenting into perspective. Proverbs says a wise son is a delight to his father. Well, there was only ever one perfectly wise son who completely deserved his father's delight. But he lost it, he left his home. He was cut off from his father on the cross for us. And he did it so that we could come home to our true home, the place of ultimate belonging and security. He lost the father's delight that he deserved so that we could enjoy the father's delight that we don't deserve. And to the extent that that becomes real to you, So that God is not just a distant sovereign, but he's your heavenly father who delights in you. And that moves your soul and fills you with joy and wonder. Then you can start to get parenting into perspective. You can love your child, but they're not your life. They're not your arm. You can let them go to live their own lives. And as a child, you can honour your parents but their approval is not everything to you. It's not the thing that you live for. You're God's beloved son or daughter, and his delight is the thing that really matters in your life. And so you're not controlled anymore by your parents' opinion of you. Your parents are just your parents. Your children are just your children. If you don't have children, you can still serve God in lots of ways and have a meaningful and fulfilled life. Proverbs 17 verse 6 gives us a lovely picture of mutual joy across the generations. Children's children are a crown to the aged and parents are the pride of their children. Once we've got parenting in the right perspective, we can see what a joy and a blessing it is and we can all play a part in it. Now we're going to hear a new song, uh, which I think is very appropriate for Mothering Sunday. It's called Every Mother 
every father. This morning we're going to pray for our nation, um, for our mission partners, the Gelsthorps, who are based in Japan, uh, rural northern Japan, and for us as a church as we learn about God's great generosity. Let's pray. God of mercy, our help and refuge, we continue to bring before you our nation in this time of need. Thank you for your mercy and help in providing a vaccine and for our health workers. Please would you bring healing to the UK, restoring all those who've been affected, physically, emotionally, financially, and may this bring great glory to your name. Please grant wisdom to the PCC as well as they discuss church services and returning to physical morning services at their next meeting. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of hope and life, thank you for all that you're doing through the Gelsthorpe family in Japan. We pray for all those who attend the church plant, the cafe, the English club and the video game club. Please would you bring many in that community who don't know you from darkness to light to new life and hope in you. Please would you uphold and sustain the girls' thoughts and the other members of their church, strengthening them each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of abundant goodness, Thank you for all your teaching us as a church as we consider what your word has to say on generosity. Please expand our understanding of your great and glorious generosity and transform us more and more into the image of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, so that we too might overflow with joyful generosity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion, communion of saints. The forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 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 Thank you very much for being a part of our online service this morning. Uh, please join us again next Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Normally on Mothering Sunday, we hand out flowers to all the women in church after service as a way of showing our appreciation for all they've done and, and what they continue to do uh, for, you know, for, for us all. Uh, to continue this uh, beautiful tradition of showing our appreciation to mothers and women in our midst, uh, the video team have put together the, uh, a flower montage and some other images. Uh, the images will appear on your screen after the service ends. We now have the blessing. Praise God who loves us. Praise God who cares. May God who gave birth to all creation bless us. May God who became incarnate by an earthly mother bless us. May God who broods as a mother over her children bless us. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>